Philip Bateman here for Bravo Charlie. We're going to take a look at what zero cost startups actually means. The point of publishing this is so that you get a technical understanding of how to go about building your empire, and so that when you read things in the Bravo Charlie newsletter, such as Scott Kilmartin's tips on success, you can integrate it into a working model. We're going to look at a few things. Hosting and scalable architecture. Secondly, what constitutes a manageable website, and by that I mean WordPress. Thirdly, interrogating customers to form a value proposition via SurveyMonkey. After this, we're going to cross to Facebook to understand executing a viral campaign. Fourthly, looking at MailChimp as a way to manage your communication and focus in on the evangelists of your new empire. And finally, touch on PR as the machine to keep it all moving. Website hosting is an interesting thing. I've personally been using GD Webhost for about the past two to three years and never had a problem with them. But if we're talking about scalable enterprise grade architecture, if you launch a viral campaign and 20,000 people decide that they're going to click on your website, or let alone a million people do, the first thing that's going to happen is your website's going to crash. Either that or an IT guy is going to run in screaming that you need more servers. And that's where cloud hosting comes in. Now what you're looking at is Rajilla. It's managed by the company UltraServe, who are an Australian business. They won the Antil 30 Under 30 awards. And this gives you the capacity to instantly scale your architecture as required. It's also priced on a basically usage basis. So rather than investing a lot of capital expenditure in your service, you just pay for what you use. Pick somebody that's been around a while, pick somebody reliable, and pick somebody you can get through to on the phone. Once you've got your hosting sorted out, you need a content management system to operate your website from. As you can see here, WordPress is a state-of-the-art publishing platform with a focus on aesthetics, web standards, and usability. It's free and it's priceless. New York Times, CNN and Ford, Australian Antil, and a number of websites that I've produced with um, various people use WordPress. It's a, it's a wonderful platform and I'll give you a quick demonstration. Now what you're looking here, what you're looking at here is the HOH Cells website. This is hydrogen, oxygen, hydrogen, fuel saving technology for long haul diesel trucking. We're just going to log in. And once we've logged in, you're going to see these little edit boxes on some of the pages. And that basically means you can manage any of the content any of the time. So if we go and click edit over here, we're going to be taken into the back end of the system. and now we're welcome to this handy little navigation window. Now we have about 4,000 people using this system at any one time and the real core of WordPress is once you've got the base architecture in you have what they call plugins, really the meat of the whole thing. From the WordPress plugin site you can get basically anything you need. You can see here we've got a search engine optimization pack, a video pack, sidebar widgets, a business directory for all the people in the community, referral management, contact forms, countdown timers, custom posts, meaning we can reveal certain parts of posts and not others, and really add in media, add in roles, have different users edit different parts of the site, and it really is quite functional. Now, I'm not going to kid you and say you can do this as a complete beginner because there is a bit of technical understanding which relates to logging into the servers and installing the various plugins and things like that. But if you've got a few days and you've got a brain on you, you can sit, you can read it end to end, or alternatively you can call somebody who's a bit technically versed and they can turn it out quite quickly for you. Now that you've got scalable architecture and a management platform to handle your business growth, it's time to hit hone in on your customers and really start delivering what they want. So the first thing to do is sit down and ask 10 people about your business idea and interview them qualitatively. This means asking open-ended questions and really listening to the feedback they give you. From these responses, you should be able to form a list of 10 questions that you can really take to a broader audience and see if your business idea has got legs. And this is where SurveyMonkey comes in. Because as they say, it's the best thing since the opposable thumb. First time I've seen that. Now, SurveyMonkey, as it sounds, is a simple way to create surveys. And when you look at the pricing, anything under 100 responses is completely free. 
and if out of the first 100 people you survey you can make 20 bucks you can then scale your business up to getting a thousand responses so on and so forth so when we're talking about scalable architecture this really is an incremental thing you can target people you can ask them good detailed questions and if you're asking the right questions you'll be getting the right responses which allows you to tailor, tailor your service offering and deliver product allowing you to scale the business upwards now at the end of this you should have a good handle on whether or not people are interested in your idea how they would use it and what they're willing to pay for it which leads us on to where are all the customers in a web 2.0 world and really we're talking about Facebook now if you listen into the Craigslist bootcamp piece after this you'll hear about the causes application on Facebook even without a specific fundraising application Facebook has over 120 million users logging on each day you can see here quite staggering statistics and what you'd consider a marketer's dream. Now the average user has 120 friends on Facebook and if you build something that gets them interested it's power like never before. One of my favorite examples of viral spreading on Facebook is the group not being on fire. Now this group started on the 2nd of April in 2009 and as you can see here in six months they're roughly 34,000 fans away from having a million people signed up. Three years ago, how exactly would you go about organizing one million people to be instantly accessible to your idea, company, or brand? And more so, what would it cost you? As Ryan Trainer recently said at the Ant Hill and Design Victoria Venture Capital by Design evening, your message needs to go from complex to simple to compelling. And in this case, not being on fire, it's pretty damn simple.